This is Ruby. Today we're going to be talking about Chapter 7, the distribution of sample means. Remember what we're looking at is we're looking now at a mean and how far away is that mean from the population mean. That is different from what we've been looking at before in Chapter 5 and 6 because we were looking at a raw score and how far away that raw score was from the population mean. So what we've done here is we've taken a survey and we've taken the average weight gain for students in their freshman year at Los Angeles Valley College. And what we find out is the population mean is nine pound with a standard deviation of six. And so that would be for our 14,000 students that are currently attending. So the distribution of scores is approximately normal. A sample of n equals four scores is selected and the average weight change is computed for the sample. It's important to recognize that the distribution of scores was approximately normal because without that information, you would not be able to do a z-score test. So what we wanna know is what is the probability that the sample mean will be greater than m equals 10 pounds? So we wanna know what's the, uh, what's the probability that people will gain 10 pounds and will gain 10 pounds or more. So what we have is mu of nine so our population mean is equal to nine, our population standard deviation is equal to six, our sample size is equal to four, and our sample mean is equal to 10. The first step would be to compute the standard error. So we find the standard error, and the standard error is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So we have the standard deviation, the population standard deviation is six, we have the sample size is four, and we're gonna take the square root of that sample size. So for the denominator of this problem, we're going to get two. And then we have in the numerator six. So we have six divided by two, which equals to three. Now, now that we know that, we can go ahead and draw our distribution. So we're gonna draw our distribution in terms of looking at, still, because it is a z-score, we're going to have zero as the mean, as we always do, and we're gonna have one as the standard deviation. So we have zero, one, two, three, as we go off to the right side, which would be the positive side, as we go off to the left side, which would be the negative side, we have negative one, negative two, negative three. We have the mu as nine, and then we have here a standard error of three. So that means that we're gonna increase, as we go across from one, two, and three, we're gonna increase by three. So one, so z of 1 would be equal to 12 here, a z of 2 to 15, a z of 3 would be 18, negative 1 is 6, negative 2 is 3, and negative 3 is 0. So that is the numeric value that would correspond to each of those z-scores. All right, now, what we're looking for is 10. So we have a mean of 10, and we're looking at the area that's greater than 10. So that's the yellow shaded area. And because it's less than 50% of the distribution, that would be considered a tail. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to calculate the z-score. So the z-score is the mean, and here we have the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard error. So we have 10 minus nine divided by three, which equals one divided by three, which uh, as we turn into a decimal, one third equals 0.33. We also know that it's a tail, and you want to note that so that when you go in to your um, z-score table that you can easily find that. So when we go into the table, what we do is we look for 0.33, we're looking for it in the tail, and we find the probability associated with 0.33 is 0.3703. So now we know that our answer is the probability that the mean would be greater than 10 equals 0.3703. Um, and so that's the probability that the student will gain more than 10 pounds in their freshman year. And if we think about that, that's about a third of freshmen, a little bit more than a third that will gain more than 10 pounds in their freshman year. Um, and we talked about the fact that probability and um, percentage are equal. So we just need to multiply by 100 to get 37.03%. Um, percent and sometimes people refer to this as a percent versus a probability. All right, now the next question that we're going to look at is using the same ideas um, but here what we're going to do is we're going to try to look to see what happens or what is the probability that students will lose weight instead of gaining weight. 
So everything remains the same. We're still using the same population with a mu of nine pounds and a standard deviation of six, and still the distribution of scores is approximately normal. Um, we're still selecting a sample for scores and we're still uh, computing the average weight change. So what we have here is what is the probability the sample mean will be less than zero pounds? So we have that mean is less than zero. So we have that the mu equals nine, the standard deviation equals six, n equals four, and m equals zero. Um, so step one is to compute the standard error. So if you find the standard error, <clears throat> you have uh, essentially, uh, we have the <clears throat> standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. So once again, we have six, and we're gonna divide that by the square root of four because four was the sample size. So the square root of four is two, and we're going to take six divided by two equals three. So again, that's just taking the standard deviation of the population and dividing it by the square root of our sample size. So we have three, which is exactly identical to the last problem that we did. All right, so then we're gonna look down here and we're gonna go ahead and draw this. So we know again that we have um, zero, one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three, demarcating our z-scores. And then we're gonna go ahead and put in the corresponding uh, standard error of the means. So we have nine, 12, 15, 18 on the positive side, six, three, zero on the negative side. And we're looking for a mean that's less than zero. So that's gonna be way out um, on the left-hand side in the tail, it'll be extreme value. That's our mean of zero. Now, we do have to recall that uh, this tail will go out into infinity and will never touch the x-axis. So, we're going to go ahead and calculate that z-score. So, the z-score equals the mean, the sample mean, minus the population mean over the standard error. So, we do have that 0 equals, or that z equals 0 minus 9. And so, we would have negative 9 divided by 3 because we do recall the standard error was equal to three, so that we end up with a negative three in the tail. So what we're gonna be looking for is negative three in the tail. So step four is going to be to look in the Z table for a proportion, and what we're gonna find is the proportion equals 0 0.0013, that's found in the tail. So we do know that the mean that's less than zero would be 0 0.0013, or we could think about it as 0.13%. So that's a very small probability that uh, students would lose weight in their freshman year. It's less than 1%. All right, now we're just gonna take um, a, a quick look at our Z table. So not a long look, but just a quick look. So um, if we go here to Z table and we think about the first probability that we were looking for, so the first probability that we were looking for was a Z of 0.33. And uh, we would look then um, in terms of what we would find as proportion in the tail. And our proportion in the tail was 0.3707. And so that would be our answer. So in, in this particular cases, when we're looking for proportion in the tail, we're always going to look for the Z and what corresponds to what's in the, in the C, as in coconut column. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.